Us content creators are a rebellious bunch. The fruit brand is mainstream, so we use Android. Y'all like EV, so I'ma be chilling with my ice. Internal combustion engine. Now that everybody is finally on Team Red, I'ma try out an Intel powered content creator rig with their newest Intel Core Ultra 9285K. But is it actually a better option for content creation workloads? Well, it has an NPU. That's gotta count for something, right? So there are a bunch of changes with this new Intel processor lineup. The biggest one is that they are omitting SMT or simultaneous multi-threading or hyper-threading. Basically, the number of cores now in an Intel processor equal the number of threads. Intel's reasons are that Number one, SMT increases power consumption. And number two, additional threats can negatively impact performance in some situations, uh, namely when it comes to single thread performance. We also get the same tile-based architecture as Meteor Lake with Foveros packaging technology. New Skymont E-cores that are now mingling with the newly single-threaded line curve P-cores. Other than that, we get a beefed up iGPU with 4X E-cores. And the L2 cache per P-core is now increased 50% from two megabytes to three megabytes. With this new Arrow Lake Intel processor lineup, we get a total of five SKUs split into three tiers, the low-end Ultra 9, mid-range Ultra 7, and the top-of-the-line Ultra 9, with the lower two tiers having KF variants with no iGPU. Like I said, we are only focusing on content creation or creative workloads today. We are strapping the Intel Core Ultra 9285K into an Aorus Z890 Master motherboard that looks very capable with an 18 plus 1 plus 2 phase power design. We also put on a chunky 360mm liquid cooler to give the CPU as much thermal headroom as possible. Other than that, we are running an RTX 4090 and a DDR5 memory kit that is similar to the one that we have on our AM5 platform. For comparison, we are looking at the Ryzen 9 9950X and the Ryzen 7 9700X. For 3D rendering in Blender, ditching hyper-threading seems to work well, making the Core Ultra 9285K about 16% faster than the older i9-14900K, and neck in neck with the Ryzen 9 9950X. In fact, it's actually faster than Team Red in Cinebench for both multi-threaded and single-threaded tests. However, if you're working with V-Ray, the sheer number of cores on the Ryzen 9 still helps it beat our Core Ultra 9. But for content creating software like Photoshop and Premiere Pro, Hyper-threading seems to still be preferred which makes the Core Ultra 9 trail behind Intel's last-gen chips. Perhaps this is a matter of optimization and things will get better. We'll still have to wait and see. Things are looking better in Resolve with the Core Ultra 9 being neck in neck with the Ryzen 9 but honestly not that different from 14th gen. For people who work with game development or virtual production in Unreal Engine, you'll be pleased to know that this Core Ultra 9 chip actually beats the Ryzen 9. The better memory support will also help here, though we didn't run the rig with faster RAM uh, for fairness sake. Finally, we're going to talk about AI, and the Core Ultra 9 CPU is only slightly better than the 14th Gen i9. However, we are seeing a significant improvement in iGPU scores. The NPU is also pretty impressive. I suspect NPU scores to be similar even on the lower end Core Ultra 5, uh, given that they are exactly the same. Also, I couldn't compare this chip with the Ryzen's because they don't support OpenVINO. All in all, Intel remains competitive in productivity workloads, even though the performance gains over 14th gen is honestly not the greatest that I've seen. For people who still have the time or mental capacity to game after staring at their PCs for 18 hours a day as a creative, we got your back. Ultimately, what you need to know when it comes to gaming, the improved power efficiency with these new processors don't always lead to like a positive outcome. It can lead to three different scenarios. Number one, it will give you the same amount of frames with less power. Number two, it will actually give you less frames. And number three, with certain titles, it will give you more frames but with less power. Basically, it's a total mixed bag. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but for gaming, generally go with Team Red unless the Intel option is better value, aka cheaper. Speaking of power efficiency, which is what Intel is actually hammering on, in Cinebench, we are seeing a 30 plus watt drop uh, from the i9-14900K. That's nice and all, but AMD is still more efficient. 
Uh, but at least Intel is moving in the right direction, I guess. This is going to lead to lower temps, but only sometimes when it's running at significantly lower wattages depending on the task. Gaming is not one of them because we are not fully loading the threads enough to see a significant difference in power draw between processors. So what's the verdict? Well, the thing you need to know is that while things do not look super positive, Intel is achieving these performance numbers with no hyper-threading. It's like having one person do two people's jobs almost as fast. These Arrow Lake processors are basically a reset to Intel's processor lineup, kind of like when Ryzen first launched. All they want from us is a little faith that things can only go up from here. The thing is, we're probably only going to see actual benefits of this a couple generations from now, kind of like with Ryzen as well. So what do you guys think? Would you guys go Intel as a content creator today in 2024? Is the NPU attractive enough as an upside? And are there still die-hard Intel fans out there? Raise your hands and leave a comment down below to let us know. Uh, if you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to see more content like this. And don't forget to follow us like a stalker on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram. Again, the name is Shane, Bang Song and Shane. And I will see you in the next one. Now take go for you.